end times civil disobedience. I think that biblical civil disobedience will be one of the most crucial philosophical, legal, and spiritual issues of the end times. It is one that I think divides the church. And I am going to give you three passages of scripture. And what I want to do with that is give you a framework to begin to examine several different uh, issues that I think are going to arise. See, I think a, a good teacher, which is not necessarily what I am, teaches you the principles of how to think critically for yourself, gives you data, and asks you to make up your mind for yourself. So let's go to the word. Matthew twenty two twenty one says, Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Caesar is the lawful secular government to whom we owe taxes and to whom we will give obedience for just laws that do not contradict the word of God. God is the one to whom we owe everything. Our tithe, our worship, and our overall obedience, our first love, our absolute first priority. That's going to become the crucial issue as I want to present to you a case for necessary end times Christian civil disobedience. Romans 13.1 says every person should be in subjection to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. <clears throat> governing authorities here are lawful government, and your responsibility to adhere to just laws. Now I think there comes a point, and that's going to be our third verse, where if the laws being made by the government contradict the will and word of God, and they're no longer representative of the authority of God. Daniel is a Jew in captivity in Babylon, and a law has been passed by uh, the king, which says, you know what, anybody who's caught worshiping anybody other than our king um, will have to be thrown in the furnace. We're going to give it, you know, a serious not just death penalty, but public example kind of thing. You know, like drawing and quartering. Or uh, burning someone at the stake. A real serious public. Everyone's watching and learning. They, I shouldn't do that. Okay. Although Daniel knew that the document, and that's the legal execution of this law, had been signed, he continued to go to his house, which had windows in its upper room, open toward Jerusalem, and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to his God and praise him just as he had done previously. He gets arrested. And there are those of you that say, well, no, good Christians don't get arrested. Good Christians don't break laws. That could mean you become spiritually married to the culture of your country as opposed to the culture of the Word of God. I don't know that. But it's a statement that contradicts the Word of God. So, when two laws contradict, I'm talking about a law or commandment of God, and a law or commandment of secular government, obey God. When two laws contradict, obey God. You're not violating the Word of God. It's a, to Caesar what is Caesar's. Your tithe and your obedience to just laws. No, sorry, your taxes and your obedience to just laws. And so, if God is first, we put God first, and we obey the laws of God, even if they contradict the, the laws of man. Now, I'm going to give us several examples as we move on through this series, which I found very fulfilling and enjoyable. Um, let me count how many there's going to be. Unless as we get to it, we're going to have examples of four different areas of information where we're going to have to analyze for ourselves what the Word of God says, like Bereans, 
and prayerfully say, well, in this situation, should I be obeying God? Should, is, does this constitute a, a war between what God says and what man says? And do I have to take a side? So, without further ado, let's stop here and come back in the next one. Thank you. God bless you. Um, if I have blessed you or encouraged you or equipped you in any fashion, please like and subscribe.